This is all getting edited out, I assume. I don't no, know. it's all, really not. It all in. How many, podcast, all how many podcasts table? have I sat in on for Unapologetic Geek Out podcast where I've had to be like, please edit that out. I will not be part of this. Officially I, won. Officially won. Officially won. Yeah. Officially won. It's like, tough when a white supremacist crashes your podcast to be want to be a part of that. Like, to, to be fair, Struz, we assumed he was a white supremacist just because he said, hey, oh, what was it, white lives, all, white lives matter. Right? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think that's a dog whistle. I, I think... Mean, I think that's a dog whistle everyone can Wasn't hear. Wasn't he not also like wearing a, a jump, cowboy okay? hat? I feel like... Sorry, back uh, right. He was wearing a cowboy hat, he was, though, right? Not only was he wearing a cowboy hat, but like I was enamored by his boots, which, if I recall, had an American flag on them. Yes, and you were they surprised did. that he came he, off saying that while I was mad. He actually yeah, put the, I, his feet up on the table, and if I remember correctly, somehow the theme from Team America started to play. It was, it was cool, and then he started talking, and then yeah, it became was, horrifying. That's and where it went all down. Again. Off the rails, and I'm sure that that file exists somewhere, and I, I anticipate, I eagerly anticipate the day where I get blackmailed with that, with oh, that that's, podcast. That's it's, in the other file. That's uh, uh, the contingency file. Uh, Travis's uh, anti, like uh, you know, anti My Little Pony rants are in there too. This is this is a blackmail podcast hey, too. Apparently, blackmail. it was contextual. It was fine. <laughs> Speaking of blackmail, though, we should get started. I'm I'm shocked you pulled in three thousand people to do this. Like this is huge. This is we have the enormous. highest turnout ever. Mm-hmm. I see the cameras in the back turning the lights off because they don't want you to see this. Yeah. But uh, yeah. it's see and those red lights going off. It's a huge. It's a huge well, podcast. You don't underst- what you understand, Struz, is that they've put white uh, white. You know the, these white uh, p- platforms on the sides here, making it look like there's l- less people. Okay? You're gonna be Nick. You're gonna be so embarrassed when we start officially introducing ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the best thing is audio format. They can't prove us wrong. Right? So the thing is about your name, Fur, is yes. that I've never known how to pronounce it, and I've only ever said it many times while, while inebriated. So first things first, hi, I'm Nick, the Merc with the Mic, the host of the UGO podcast. This is my fellow unapologist here, my co-host, my life partner. What, uh, what's your name, my friend? I've forgotten it. Well, we're going to ignore the life partner thing because no, mm-hmm. and I'm Travis. We're partners for life. What? Does that mean something else? Am I misinformed? We're just going to go with all no. <laughs> just everything no. And our special guest, whose name I'm about to butcher. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Do you want me to correct you now before you say it? Or no, I, I want to go first. Oh, g- and give, then give, give you correct okay. me. Because that's the order things are done. Actually, I want you to go first and then just roll with it, and that's your name from now on. But I realize that's a little unacceptable. Right. So so this is Fur Struz. Close. Uh, You're missing the R and the U up. It's actually Fur Sturz. Fur Sturz. Fur Sturz. Fur Sturz. That's not your real name. That's a real name. That's That's your DJ name. No, that's my real. No, my my DJ name is is DJ Furskin Rug. Like that's (laughs) that's my DJ name. Uh, my my name though I am I am indeed Firsters, uh, comedian for uh, Fearless Comedy Productions in Minneapolis, um, and now uh, unaffiliated with any other uh, podcasting or uh, convention comedy group, I guess. Yeah, you've been uh, on the on the on the mend actually from your podcasting addiction. Apparently, I yeah, I haven't done it for eight days, and just like just like some sweet sweet black tar heroin, you guys. Showed up and were like, "Take this." We are really glad here that I we're am. here facilitating your relapse. It's yeah. it's great. Uh, they're gonna find me. Like it's 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 gonna be really sad when in like a week from now you're gonna see in what's the newspaper here in Madison? Like what's anybody, the local know? Newspaper? anybody, anybody know? Anyone know? Anybody Any local? local Madisons? It's gonna be the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. They're gonna be like local, like visiting man found like in an alleyway with nothing but recording equipment in his underpants. Like, it's going to be a shame, and you're gonna look at that headline and be like, "Why did we do that to him? What happened?" We knew it was well, coming. You see, he he died as he lived, and you know we He's tried to tell selling him. my brand. <laughs> <laughs> He he knew what he was doing. He was he wasn't being safe. He wasn't using pop screens, wind filters. It was it was crazy. Anyway, uh, yes, welcome to the podcast. Uh, this is the Wrath of Cons edition. Get it? Because it's a pun. Oh man! Oh, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, you just got it right now. See, is this gonna be like the shitty Wrath of Cons with like 
Oh, Ban- you- Bandersnap Cumberbund, or is no, it going Cumberbund, to be Cumberbund? Uh, yeah, the the beaver looking guy. Yeah, um, that was a think- weird movie because, like, if you think about it, like Benedict Cumberbatch has a really weird face, right? Like, we can all agree with that. Like, mm-hmm. he he's he- like an otter transformed into a human that well- I'd still have sex with. But I feel bad about it later. <laughs> Wait, better. is that partially bestiality then? I'm I confused. think it would be like he's at least twenty percent otter, so I think I'm cool. See, my description was that like he's like every single conspiracy theory image of a lizard person ever. <laughs> like <laughs> They live among us. They <laughs> like live if among you, us. If you're watching like a right wing video of like somebody being like Obama's a lizard person, you can see it when he blinks here. They're gonna like cut it through a picture of Benedict Cumberbatch. I am very shocked Alex Jones does not have a, a Benedict Cumberbatch ranch on hand that I can find. That's that's ridiculous. <laughs> no, but then also in that movie you had like Chris Pine, which while he's an attractive man, he does have weird lips. Like Chris Pine has very weird lips. <laughs> Uh, they, they are disproportionate. And then Zachary Quinto, who is also a very handsome man, uh, just has a weird eyebrows. Like those eyebrows, I think he actually has to mow them. Like he actually has to use a little bit of like a weed whacker? Yeah, sort of like thing? to get them. Like ever since he was Siler, I think that was a thing. And I'm getting some feedback here. Yeah, yeah I'm you getting are. feedback too. I'm going to try and turn you down turn a little bit. Turn me down. I don't even know which one you are, but <laughs> I'm just going to assume you're here. All right. That's probably, that is right. You did it. That's, Woo-hoo! that's exactly it. Hole in the one. Awesome. So Wrath uh, of Cons. <laughs> so Wrath of Cons, yes. Uh, we will be sharing uh, funny con stories with you guys uh, from our experiences, and we'll have you guys come up and share any con stories you want to share with us. But first, we have to do the regular part of the episode, just because our fans demand it. I mean, I don't really want to do it, because let's face it, uh, we got to go through some of the news for the week, like we like to do. Oh, boy. And this this week... Just fan news. This week... Calm down oh, my her. goodness. Um... So, yeah, this might have been a good one to call controversy if we want to keep the pun work up. There you go. We don't. I'm on fire today. You're going to be on fire. (laughs) That's a, that's a veiled threat. Wow. Okay. (laughs) Escalated quickly. But before we get started, I always want to mention, uh, that we will be running more panels here, uh, this weekend. We got a podcasting 101 panel tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. and then uh, in the same room, which is Salon F and G. We will be uh, at 10, 10 a.m. doing celebrity impressions. I'm an amateur impressionist. Uh, come down if you want to share your impression of a celebrity or you want to just learn how to make some funny voices. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Anime Pitch is a pitch game that we do, pitching your own idea for an anime, and you will have a chance to win prizes. And that will be at 8 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, also want to mention that uh, we're going to be doing the Big Fat Geek Trivia panel yeah, so uh, Nick is at least uh, Travis. I think, unfortunately, I didn't make it to the he cut. He did not make the cut. Uh, we needed one person from each. And Nick, I'll be honest, threw you under the bus. I'm at, uh, I said, which one is better? And he said, uh, Travis sucks. Uh-huh. Actually, were his exact words. No, I, actually, I believe uh, you entirely. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is, is okay. what he said. Uh, so it was. It in was my rough. defense, it was harsh. I, in my defense, my exact words is that Travis is nowhere near as funny as I am, and he sucks. That, okay, yeah, that little. Do bit not support. misquote me. Uh, but, but uh, Big Fat Geek Quiz is tomorrow in, uh, at noon in the salon rooms, uh, which, I mean, I'll be honest, if people are, are listening to, to this uh, in the future, in the future world, hello, future world, uh, do not Send invest. time travelers, travelers back, fix the election. Do not invest. Sorry. Do not invest in segues. That was a mistake. <laughs> that was, like, as this, like, from 2017, it's still not an okay thing to do. So do not, do not invest. It's a bad <laughs> thing. Um, but, uh, the, the Big Fat Geek Quiz is tomorrow at noon in, uh, the salon rooms. Uh, basically BBC style quiz show. We have teams featuring a bunch of different, uh, geek podcast media aficionados such as yourself, Nick. Uh, put that as a, as a quote line on your book. Uh, and, uh, right there. comedians, uh, from all over, all over the Midwest are gonna be there being on teams. It's gonna be a good, good fun event. Yeah, uh, I'm already, uh, I'm going to be on a team with, uh, Aiden, right? Aiden, Aiden Milligan. Is Aiden Milligan. He's, uh, he is also a comedian from, uh, from Fearless Comedy Productions in the Twin Cities, um, which, like, if I can take a minute to plug. Do it, go Fearless. for it. It's great. I can't, I can't say enough about this comedy group. I mean, it is, uh, a, a comedy collective in the Twin Cities, um, just staffed with, with, with queer comics, comics of color, uh, trans comics. It's incredible. It's incredible to work with everybody there. Um, and, and they made a huge splash at, uh, at the Minnesota Fringe Festival, um, 
two weekends ago, the last two weekends, I think three of their shows made it into the top like 15 for box office. So, I mean, it is, it is such a fun, good quality group to work with. And, uh, if you, if you want good stuff, like them on Facebook, Fearless Comedy Productions. They're great. Oh my God, I got a mic stand. This is great. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, I was, I was so Which worried. Is okay, the my right arm is my strong one, so I could have, for tennis reasons, I play tennis. Settle down, you. Single player. Because <laughs> I have a garage and I just hit it against the wall. Oh. My penis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> man, it's so freeing being an 18 plus panel. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that sounds great. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of comedy and laughing at people. And you're gonna, you're gonna try some tomorrow night too. Right? I, yes, at nine I'm, o'clock uh, Central Time in yep. in the comedy open mic, the first one of its kind. In a convention land. Yeah. Uh, apparently, I was looking at some of the rules, and apparently, there's n- uh, not going to be allowed to punching down jokes. No, no. So, I will throw you out if you punch yeah, down. Yeah. So I don't know that I'll necessarily I mean, throw you out, but I guarantee that the audience ain't going to have you for that. So I had to rip up like 90% of my content, <laughs> but like the, that last, the 10% that's left is pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> I'll, I'll admit. Uh, but, but yes. Uh, anyway. Uh, if anyone has any anything else to plug or anything else, we should we get right into the news. Travis, you were ready to get into the news? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So, news of the week. What happened this week, guys? Well, a lot. Uh, first things first. Uh, the, the realist. The, def- the defenders. God damn it. <laughs> you know, we've gone through, what is it, 92 episodes without one Iggy Azalea reference? Uh, it had to happen. Super proud of <laughs> infinite it. Infinite monkeys and an infinite typewriter yes. is... are going to eventually punch out the lyrics to fancy. <laughs> <Yeah>. I don't... <laughs> Anyway, oh uh, the Defenders happened this week, or last weekend, really, uh, and we did a review of it uh, that you can go, yeah, you can listen to and go back and listen to. Our our main thoughts were where we were a little, we were a little disappointed on it. Yeah, we were we were not we not not saying that it was bad. It was just that we were expecting a little bit more. And I put a shout out to anyone who wanted to email me and change my mind about it. Because I was like, I really kind of want to like this. Anyone want to change my mind about it? Tell me what was good. And uh, our friend Don, remember Don? Yeah. Travis, uh, Amethyst Don, as you probably know her, uh, as we usually refer to her. Uh, she wrote back with some conflicting opinions, or she says they were conflicting, but basically she just says all the same stuff we were saying. Uh, so not very good at opinion changing, huh? No, she has one conflicting oh, thing here okay. that I did want to get to. So she said that the biggest... Uh, the biggest nuisance was Danny having to proclaim that he was the Iron Fist to anyone that would listen to him over and over again like a petulant child, which furthered my belief that the problem with the character isn't Finn Jones, it's poor writing. I'm not entirely sure they know how to write Iron Fist and make him compelling. Without him coming off as a rich teenage boy with PTSD and a temper tantrum in the body of someone much older, honestly, I don't really know what uh, that a more seasoned actor could do better with that kind of tripe for lines. So, she seemed a little on the fence about him. Well, uh, to, to be fair, to, and I'm not going to bat for Iron Fist here. Because, no. let's be honest, Iron Fist is a terrible character. And has always been a terrible character. There's not been one moment where Iron Fist has been good. Because the whole, the whole concept of Iron Fist is based on outdated, like, stereotypes. Um, I, I will agree on that. I will push back on the fact that there is a great comic book series out right now that's Power Man and Iron Fist. Okay, yeah. Now, Whenever you see teamed up with Luke Cage, he's good. But if, if you wanna, if you wanna do like the now, but like from, from what the oh. series of Iron Fist was, uh, on Netflix and Defenders, it's, it's, they were obviously doing like the origin and, and everything else, um, to introduce, which you have to do when you introduce a character like Iron Fist, because oh, because uh, no one cares about him. No one cares about him, so we have to introduce his origin, and and so maybe if if they could get away from that and actually develop him as a character beyond a beyond an introductory series, and then to just force him with all these other great characters that they've built, because um, Jessica Jones honestly is probably one of the best television uh, series in the last. Five years, I would say. Yeah, um, it's, it's really good. Uh, maybe, maybe he did. Maybe Danny would have a chance to to be like, oh, okay, yeah, no, he's he's all right. Or they just made one good season. And I will, yeah, I will agree too. with I will agree with her <laughs> that uh, a lot of it is the writing. That the writing for his dialogue is really bad. Um, I do not agree that a, a better actor could have sold that dialogue a little bit better. See Sigourney Weaver, who who actually delivered a lot of those lines that were like, 
eh, these are all right, but she has enough presence to actually like, oh, I can actually believe this. But uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll have to see him play something other than Danny. Yeah. What else, what else has he been in? Uh, he's the actor. He was. Uh, he's Finn Jones. He was in Game oh. of Thrones. The only thing I know him is that he was uh, Marjorie. He was Marjorie's brother, the gay one. Oh, Remy. Yeah, Remy. He wasn't in it that long. Right? No, he was not he, in it very long. He. Uh, he basically uh, uh, ghost like Shadow Baby mm-hmm. killed yeah, him. Sh- no, Shadow Baby killed his uh, his lover. His lover. Yeah, yeah. Stannis's yeah. brother. Yeah, he got Loris. he got a bit with Loris. Cersei at the end with the wild. Uh, spoilers for Game of Thrones, so anyone's not caught up. It's like, I feel bad for anyone. It's been seven seasons. Nick. Obviously, I, she, obviously, she's not caught up. She's leaving. Bye. Sorry for the Game of Thrones spoilers. It, it's it's the biggest thing monsters. in the entire world right now, and like I I think the cutoff for spoilers is season three at this like at like next season season three spoilers are going to be okay, but at this point in the show is run. Yeah, obviously uh, Sean Bean's not there anymore, guys. I hate to ruin it for you. <laughs> well, that was obvious. Someone anyone who hasn't watched the show but know who Sean Bean is know. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, that's how it works. I'm gonna put two and two together on this one. <laughs> I want him, uh, Danny Trejo, and M- Michelle Rodriguez yes. to all be in a movie together and just try to survive the longest. <laughs> no, they try to kill each other. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I'm into that. But yeah, she has a couple more opinions saying that uh, Karen is the worst. Uh, I seriously hate her, and Matt should have more supportive friends. And I'm eh, like, well, they're they trying were to... trying to like, cure him of his of addiction to violence basically if they treat it like alcohol uh, yeah that'd be to be someone who's you know addicted to podcasting going to po- next to podcast and be like hey you should help me with this <laughs> and we'll just be like yeah sure let's do that <laughs> like them trying to stop him makes actually a lot of sense to me you guys i love candy so much what do i do just keep eating twix bars like, <laughs> it'll help trust me I don't know. I still kind of feel really bad. I don't know. Maybe eat another Twix bar. Maybe I'll help. I mean, maybe that's the answer. This will be the one that does it. This will be the one where I'm like, no, this is enough. But it's Twix bars. You can't have too many Twix bars. It's a thing. Well, uh, I'm really, I'm glad we managed to sneak in that uh, Twix sponsorship in this episode. I'm, I'm glad. It's how we get paid. Um, I'm left, glad we managed to wrangle that in there. That left was, Twix for life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but this, uh, while we're talking about uh, the Defenders, we got uh, another. Uh, Marvel kind of story. We got well, Joss Whedon, our director, oh our, boy. our our geek god. Because oh boy, and this is not man. I did not want to talk about this story because, but everyone has an opinion on it, except me. And I'm gonna get into it. And maybe this is a little uh, controversial take to take on it. But um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Joss Whedon, it came out with his uh, his ex wife wrote up this essay uh, detailing him uh, his. 15-year-long multiple affairs that he had, uh, and uh, that was the reason for their divorce, apparently, and it's she was really mad about it, and uh, I think, I don't forget what the incident was, but she said that she wasn't, wasn't uh, she was tired of him be, being seen as a, as a feminist icon, correct? Yes, My, yeah, yeah. Uh, hiding, hiding behind a, 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 she used a metaphor about uh, hiding behind a wall. Mm-hmm. Essentially, is I believe what it was, if I remember the the essay correctly. Yeah, and uh, he released a statement saying that uh, while some of this is misleading, uh, we're uh, I'm not going to comment uh, for the sake of our children and the family hmm. overall, uh, which I think was probably the correct response. Or if I would have just not said anything at all, like. But I mean, if there is a correct response for responding to a 15-year affair, well, yeah, he well. didn't like disregard her or call her, call her a liar or yell at her or blame her in any way. And the whole, now the whole argument is: Can Joss Whedon still be a feminist uh, while he is a cheater? And I don't know if everyone else's take on it is. Uh, yeah. Ugh. Look, there's one part in the story that I that makes me quest second guess it, which is the part where he she says that he said, and this is all fucking secondhand and hearsay, but he uh, what he apparently said was that he felt like a a Greek god myth myth thing, and he had all this power as a producer, and all these needy aggressive women were around him, which. To me, as I'm like, man, if that's not some when you are caught red-handed shit, you say, 
Like that that sounds right, like that that is that is the very like but I have to the, you see all these women that yeah. want me. And I'm like, dude, you got caught. Just accept it. Like yeah. you, you you had sex because you wanted to have sex with someone else. Own up to it, dude. Don't make excuses. And the one thing in that thing was that if he was using his power as a producer to have sex, like I'm not but then again, that's implied and we don't know to what extent that was like is it hey i'm joss whedon would you like to sleep with me and go like oh yeah i would like like yeah that's an abuse of his power because he's joss whedon but uh i don't know i think i think the problem and i mean like and i think this is the case with hollywood where where you hear the idea um all the time of, of hollywood and show business of of the casting couch which the idea where you on a roll in something, you're gonna have to do a little something yeah. for me kind of thing. And, and especially in, in a position like, like Joss's position where, um, if he had been, for instance, sleeping with executives on equal footing, that kind of thing, like, okay, this guy's a scumbag, he cheated, but it's, definitely not a situation where it's not an abuse of power at right least. yeah people are looking to get something out of it but in that case where it sounds like from from the from the the take of it uh it sounded like it was indeed with people on set like potential people who he had power over the darn lighting crew the, yeah. but but it's it doesn't make him not a feminist because he likes to have sex with people. Like I'm, a, I'm a pretty sex positive person. Mm-hmm. If you want to fuck, you're gonna fuck. Like that's yeah. gonna be like that's you're gonna you want to dangle your doodle doodle away, you know. But uh, but to use use the position that he was in and potentially where he was sleeping with people underneath him, as it were, um, that's pretty gross. And well, it just reaffirms my belief that Brian Fuller is actually the best femi- like one of the best feminist male writers. Well, uh, and, in Hollywood, and the, what I did, what I think about that too is that we just don't know if like is there evidence that he did do that or is this all like because from the statement I heard it was just she implied that he used or that he said that he used this position, and I just don't know like I'm like well I don't know I mean these stories are always weird to me they seem very personal kind of like uh you know obviously you know what from her perspective too I totally get it if someone cheated on me and I saw them go to great success and every, and to great acclaim, I'd be mad about it. And I'd be totally petty and trying to destroy that person because uh, I don't hate, I hate getting one over on. But, uh, I don't know. Like, it's, it, for me, I'm just kind of like, uh, I want to stay back from this one until, like, it's for sure that he used his position to, uh, you know, coerce women that were underneath him. Like, that would be where I would condemn him. But still, it doesn't make Buffy any less of a feminist character. Yeah, but so. I think that's my main problem with Joss Whedon is that he was a feminist in the 90s. And that he didn't really evolve past that, whereas feminism has. Well, he's always been for, you know, promoting women. And, right. Uh, but see, the problem with that is, is not going to work this for is us. Gonna, this is going to be very this difficult. Do you have any way to filter this out? Yeah. I uh, hope <laughs> Hopefully I can fix this in post at some point. Uh, but yeah, this is really bad. How much is that picking that up? Uh, let's see. Let's go a couple seconds of silence. You son of a bitch. <laughs> you well-timed... Bu- oh, touche. It is on now. So is this basically a battle of bands? Oh, but with it's redlining us? it. No, that was you talking, no, though, you too. Talking. It's going to be some nice underneath music no, is what's going to happen here. we got a nice little bass going on here. Right now it's annoying, but with the dynamic mics, it might, it might actually work out, so... We'll hope. You know In case someone that, can hear this, let's uh, use that listening. as an excuse to uh, to go out of this conversation conversation to another awkward conversation. So they're making a Joker movie. Why? Oh my god! Yeah, that's pretty much the internet's reaction. No, no, but don't worry, it's better. Yeah, there'll be a new actor, entirely new actor. Is it? Yeah. Oh. It's going to be a origin story, so they can't use any of the current actors. They're going to get a brand new one. See, I heard somewhere. that, and it wasn't going to be tenanted to the DCU film. And now I'm hearing that the guy who directed The Hangover is going to direct it. Yep. And Martin Scorsese is going to produce it. I was going to say, Martin Scorsese is involved at least, yeah. so it'll at least be really like... I am excited to see a Joker-based movie between Brooklyn and Boston. I, That's where it's going to be. It's going to be great. Ben Affleck is going to be there. Leo is going to, Leonardo DiCaprio is going to be there. Um, so you guys fucking jokes, do you? <laughs> We gotta get away from these fucking cops. Ha ha ha! 
Mark Wahlberg, why are you here? I'm here to mess up your day, all right? <laughs> why did he get Australia in there? I don't why is Mark... <laughs> Actually, why don't we just skip the Milliman? Make Mark Wahlberg the Joker. Make, yeah, make Mark make. Wahlberg. Hashtag Marky Mark jokey joke. <laughs> Hey, uh, I'm the Joker. I'm here to terrorize you and, and your city. Uh, say hi to your mother for me. <laughs> oh, you, you can't. She's dead. Well, that's just how it works. Hey, hey there, hey there, Batman. How you doing today? How you doing, Batman? You doing all right? Looking good. You working out? You doing you doing bro, you doing lifts, bro? <laughs> You're looking good. You're looking jacked there. Tell, tell you what. Tell you what, Batman. Uh, tell you what. Come on over to Dunkin' with me. We'll have this over coffee. We'll have this discussion. It'll be great. Get a frappuccino. We'll shit talk that Bruce Wayne fella. I never liked that guy. <laughs> and you know what? We can even just go further into this hellhole and we, just be like, you know, you know what? what? Let's do a crossover stop. Transformers now. We oh, have to man. stop right now because I'm getting sold on this movie. And I now I want to see it happen. Um, so, yeah... Can we just kind of officially state that the DCEU does not know what it's doing? It's a mess. It, like, they seem to be taking the most random shots in the dark, and sometimes, I guess because 90 times out of 100, like, Wonder Woman was good. Oh, thank God, let's get that same director back. Like, that was the news in the news this week. They got Patty Jenkins back to direct the sequel, because they're not complete morons, I guess. Uh... And well, yeah. I actually heard, too, that this is going to be off their line of, like, spin-off movies for the DCU, where well, they're going to be doing, like, more than just the Joker. Well, who knows? Maybe it'll be great, like, that fucking animated killing joke that was so fantastic. Oh, uh, just riveting. Oh, the worst. Uh, I've kind of heard that the... the yeah, just the best. I've kind of heard that the Harley Quinn Batman one isn't very good either. Oh, I haven't watched that one yet. I, I heard it was pretty bad. Like going to include Harley Quinn in this, too? It's yeah, like, it's now weird. that's what I'm hearing, too, is that it's going to be more of a Harley Quinn Joker oh. story. Great. Because that's what I want to see, is the start of that romance. Yeah. Um, I'd rather see the Gotham City Sirens, to be completely honest. And yet, Nick, you're missing the big picture here in the DCEU, is that we are now how many years into this experiment, and we still don't have an arm fall-off boy movie. Like that? <laughs> That's the greatest failure. That you don't is... have a Legion of Justice movie helping no. us out here. <laughs> like a Legion of Heroes, like, no, there's been not one flight ring, not one flight ring in the last 20 goddamn years. <laughs> Such horseshit. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, what else happened? Oh, yeah, that Xena show got canceled. Uh, the Xena reboot. Already? Yeah. Uh, is it even on? No, no, the, oh. they, they were canceling the plans to go forward for it, and the rumor is, now this is not confirmed, but the rumor is the guy that was creating it, I don't remember, again, got his name off the top of my head, but he wanted to push for Gabriella and Xena to be in an openly gay relationship, and NBC was not having it. Of course not, because them being in a closed, you know, closet gay relationship was so much worse. <laughs> Like, it wasn't even that closeted. No, I mean, really like, the final was... season, the subtext just became text. <laughs> like, it's not that subtle. Uh, like, NBC, you have This Is Us out there. Like, why? <laughs> What's the stretch? I don't get it. Like, this... Where's the limit? Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, we've talked about some rough news. Should we get to some, some good news? Some news that I quite enjoy. Uh, X Hamster. Okay, I, I saw some recognition in the crowd. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, it's not going where you think it's going, Fur, okay? I'm going somewhere with this. Okay. I... Don't look at my search history real quick. Nor one, mine. One I... second. Okay, so you know that Sense8, uh, they canceled that earlier this year and then kind of had brought it back for a movie. Yeah. And, well, X Hamster is going one further. They're saying, you bring Sense8 over to us and we'll give you a whole season. We'll give you a whole season. We'll give you multiple seasons. We'll let you finish it out the series. Really? Yeah, here's their exact address here. Uh, their first official statement says, We're huge admirers of the show, as many of uh, as are many of our fans. Obviously, for both of us and the Wachowskis, this would be a big move, and the logistics would need to be worked out. This isn't just about switching a network. This is about switching the way a show is delivered, and thus how a show is produced and, w and what is produced. Does it open up possibilities for storyline if the show is moved away from a mainstream corporation and onto a platform that's not sexophobic? Does 
a mainstream audience feel comfortable moving to a platform known for uh, for adult content. What we admire about the Wyshkowskis and uh, uh, and about the show itself is that it takes risks. I think that we are a, a nascent network, and I'd love to hear what they would do with with us. And oh imagine, my God! <laughs> imagine that with an American flag billowing in the background, <laughs> and like Bill Paxton like saying it. Like that's some that's good shit right there. That like okay, I have heard like this is. That is a better, like, marketing pitch from a porn site than I have heard yeah. from, like, a general network. It's That's incredible. Their PR person is on point. They are killing it right now. Um, I'm looking forward to when Pornhub tries to bring back Firefly. Because like, that's, that's, you, know you know they're getting in on this. They're not getting Oh, no. Else. Pornhub's not going to sit behind the sidelines here. Oh, yeah. We're, it's coming back, baby. Brown coats. Uh... Don't hash, don't search on that tag for on Porta. Like that is not what you think it is. Uh, I, that that is of all like 2017 has just been <laughs> it's like a, it's where, a year. where 2016 has it been is. like you wake up and you're like oh my god, I wonder what kind of shit's gonna happen today. Like, every day I wake up in 2017, I'm like, oh, my God, what kind of shit's going to happen today? Like, it is it is on this level right now where you can, like, the, the anticipation, like, it's a reason to wake up every morning. Like, the, I did not wake up this morning thinking, I really hope that a porn site that, like, is occasionally popped up in my browser uh, <laughs> will, will like, bring back a show that I rather enjoyed. Like, I know. It's, it's definitely I, a roller coaster of a year. <laughs> Just all around. I'm I'm really looking forward to the po- to the point where people are going to be explaining away their ex hamster accounts. Like I'm, I know I'm, I have it for Sense Eight. I just have it for Sense Eight. That's all. That's all, baby. No, no, seriously. Uh, <laughs> Honey, they they just got the, like they just rebooted Full House again. I need to know what they're up to. Like it's what on earth has Bob Saget been up to, babe? Like I need to know. They're those they're scamps. I love them all. Although I kind of wonder. Percentage-wise, how much of an increase in orgy scenes will we get then if it moves there? I'm thinking at least two per episode then. I like, I, I I don't know. I think that might be in the look. This isn't gonna happen, guys. There's like the deal with Netflix. They probably have that. I don't know what it is, but they usually do deals where it's down ironclad tight. Um, not to say that's impossible, but it, like if it did happen, I'd like rejoice in the streets. I think that'd be the best thing ever. I I, I don't even care. Like that. That is fantastic. Okay, but if we're sharing that account, it's going to be in your name, just so you know. (laughs) What are you going to do this weekend? I'm going to have the pros over. We're all going to gather around, log on to xhamster.com and watch Sense8. (laughs) Just a bunch of guys watching stuff on a porn site. Just guys guys being guys watching orgies. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. I I appreciate the invitation to watch Sense8, guys, but... Why is there gun oil here? I don't. <laughs> this, this, I don't know, I'm getting I'm getting mixed messages. Uh, yeah, I uh, hashtag this episode hashtag gun oil. Watch the lube sponsorships roll right in like that's. <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, one more news story here. Uh, Everyone, uh, you know about the little show called Confederacy on HBO? Yeah, anyone, that thing. anyone hear about that? I know it was super obscure. No one's really talked about it at all. But, yeah, uh, so HBO is still going forward with Confederacy, um, which, <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> as a as a artist, I understand you have an uh, idea of, like, I want to stand behind the artist and, you know, put forth my vision and have it not be altered because of the, the will of the masses. But if I'm a PR person, I'm going, oh my god, please, HBO, do not do this. Um, they made a statement uh, in regards to the backlash that has obviously happened uh, that goes like this. We have great respect for the dialogue and concern being expressed around the Confederate. Uh, or just Confederate, my bad. The network said that in a statement, we have faith in that uh, Nichelle, Dan, David, and Malcolm, the creators of the show, will approach approach the subject with care, sensitivity. The project is currently in its infancy, so we hope that people will reserve judgment until there is something to see. 
basically, uh, we hope you don't get mad until it's way too late for us to not do this anymore. <laughs> so, Great my plan. main takeaway from this is that HBO, hire, fire your PR person, and then hire ex-hamsters PR person, <laughs> is the main takeaway I take from this week. Uh, I don't know. I mean... Yeah, Confederate could be good, and it could be, like, the best show around and really say something, but there's a there's a good shot that it won't be good, and it'll send the wrong message and do a lot of damage to your brand. So I don't know, like, how you want to roll that dice. But, uh, I don't know, Fur, what do you feel about it? Well, it's, it's I mean, like, we live in a world right now where, where a lot of the, um, as, as a former historian myself, where a lot of the issues that Confederate will be about the whole, oh, what if the Confederate states had won and they had a country that's essentially been built on slavery further than we already were uh, mm-hmm. and got to continue that, um, we still see the effects of that in, in everyday everyday life. You know, the, the effects of Jim Crow are still there. We still see that in the way that, that black men are disproportionately imprisoned in our, in our prison system, uh, the way that... Um, our justice system works in that regard, and 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 that stuff is still happened. So you still see that there wasn't really a, a full loss, like oh, this is done, this is over, like in World War II, which is why you can have shows like The Man in High Castle, because it's not like we live in a world where Nazis are free to roam the streets without any concept. Oh. Fuck! <laughs> oh, so close. Damn. So close. God damn it. Uh, no, I think Confederacy is a bad fucking idea, and and I, I'm I, I mean, unfortunately, HBO is like untouchable at this point. Everybody's yeah. given them all of their like they have all the I think they have all the money. The last time I checked, Just they all have all of it, and uh, they're obviously going to be able to go through for this. And the best thing you can do is just not watch. Yeah. That's the well, best way to send a message. My yeah, biggest well, problem with this kind of thing is that it kind of feels the same thing as the Nazi cap, where I'm like, okay. The amount of actual storytelling you're getting out of this versus the damage you're doing does not seem to be equal. We're like, how much benefit are you actually getting out of telling these stories? Like, you don't have something better to tell? And, and that's just it, is how are you going to do this show without making it explicitly clear about what's going on? Because in a sh- it's not like, it's not going to be a show where it's just like, oh, like, what if we're like 2,700 years into the future and the idea of slavery is worn out anyway, blah, blah, blah. Like, this is going to be a show where I guarantee right away within the first 10 minutes, you're going to see somebody whipping a black person. Like, it's... Yeah. Like, we get it. Like, they won the, they won the war in this this timeline. And, we're like, the way we're going to be... Only way we're going to be able to put this across is by brutalizing black people uh, even further. Well, and, you know, Benioff and Weiss... While they've done great work on Game of Thrones, they're not the most subtle creators. Like, there's a couple moments in Game of Thrones where I'm like, where it's just like, yeah, this is pretty explicit. Um, like, did we need to get see Sansa get raped uh, as explicitly, or the Jamie and Cersei scene, like from what was it, season four? Like, that was a little weird. Yeah, felt like, uh, the, felt like yeah. we could have skipped over that. Like, if we're fast-traveling and skipping over scenes from this season, maybe we should go back and, like, shave that couple of minutes off. Uh, but, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't have a, a funner story to go off of that. I just wanted to make the joke of that they should hire the ex, ex-hamster people, so that had to come first. So I couldn't really end on a good story, so sorry about that. <laughs> well, but it was for the sake of comedy. Always. So... Uh, I, I, think, I think the problem is that just right now they feel invincible because they've made Game of Thrones, which is... Um, arguably probably like the biggest cable show to ever, ever exist. Mm, yeah. Um, and, and there's like, well, what, what can we do next? Like, what do we have the power to do? Oh, we have the power to make this show. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's see what we can get away with. And, and, yeah, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure it's obviously gonna, we're gonna get a pilot, obviously, for it, but it's not gonna be comfortable to watch and it's not gonna be good. And it's gonna be really hard for them to get their point across in that show without, uh, reopening a lot of wounds that this country is still trying to figure out how to heal. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I pretty much agree with that, with that wholeheartedly. Um, with that, uh, I was gonna try and bring up another thing here, but it doesn't look like the projector is, work, uh, is working. Uh, you uh, see if I can turn. Is there an on button? Let me turn that on at all. Like maybe we can get it on. I don't know. That's all right. Let me go grab a water real quick. Yeah, just go go for that. Well, 
Uh, it was uh, my main thing. Was uh, it was uh, uh, from a couple weeks ago? Anyway, it was kind of old. But you realize Valve was making a new game. Really? What? Yeah, Valve was making a new game. Everybody, uh, and it is Dota, uh, a Dota card game. Oh yeah, I do remember that now. So uh, here, I actually have. You know what? I can play the audio for you. I think. Yeah, we got it. So they released this at uh, I forget where they were, but it was a big convention. So they released like Valve, new IP, new game, and of course so they're gonna show the the title screen. And the title screen it shows up Dota card game, and the reaction went something like this. Now, that, man. Is, that is the sound of at least 300 souls dying. <laughs> I, that is the sound of a bunch of people expecting threes of games. Like someone, there was a bunch of people there expecting Half Life Three, Episode Three. Uh, a bunch of people expecting like what was it? Like uh, a Portal Three. Basically, uh, anything yeah. that's an actual Left 4 Dead game. Left Three. Uh, and they got a Dota card game. I'm surprised that no one like started a riot and burned that son of a bitch. See, to the we're just we seem to be having a theme here of PR people are losing their jobs. Yeah, it's that was whoever made that decision to, like to reveal it like that. Oh god, a bunch of fans that are so excited for the new Valve. You know what? Like, gonna, that's probably soul crushing. Honestly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it again. Somebody, somebody unleash Gabe, uh, unleash Gabe from his bat. They just they go in and they 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 really they talk they they have to obviously blind the guys that watch the bat because they can't they can't look at Gabe Newell right they can't look at him it's it's forbidden and they they go in there and they have to watch to the screen and they ask them what has what hath the prophet bestowed upon us and these men they they disappear into a vat. <laughs> And while they're down there, Gabe Newell speaks directly into them. He can't talk. He's underwater. You can't talk underwater. He uh, speaks directly to their minds, and he says, The Dota card game. The prophet has spoken. They come up. They're like, yeah, that's, we need a new prophet, guys. This is, this is bad. <laughs> that is, yeah, when you got a bad guy where you're like, even your cult leader where he's like, and drink the Kool-Aid. Like, eh, I don't... I, this seems a little weird. Like, the Kool-Aid does, it has chunks in it. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, the Valve fanboys are sheep or whatever, but you could have announced, like, anything else, and that would have had a better reaction than a Dota fucking card game. Well, I can kind of see where they're going, because, you know, Hearthstone is a thing, The Witcher just got their card game. Like, card games seem to be the popular money-making thing. <laughs> Why Dota? I don't know. <laughs> Why? Of all the franchises you have... To because make it's a money-making game. ploy. That's oh. all it is. Who And who's the poor son of a bitch that, that put together that presentation and was like, man, this is going to kill. I'm going to put the screen up there. Artifact. And then, like, the slow reveal, because it was, like, the slow reveal of Dota. And then... A couple other half seconds, and then coming from the uh, coming faded back in, card game. Like that was set up in three tiers of abject failure. Like it, it was, it was a chance for you to go like, oh, oh, maybe, maybe, and then your, your hopes are dashed. Like, ah, uh, this is so a horrible. seven layer salad of sadness. It's it's like a subversion of that meme where that where they're like, all right, guys, we need new ideas, and then like two people have really good ideas. And then the third guy has an idea, and they throw them out the window. But in this case, it's like the executive being like, "All right, guys, we need a new game for Valve. What do you got?" And like, exec number one's like, <laughs> "Left for Dead 3. Uh, exec number two's like, uh, "Half Life Two Episode 3. And then the third guy's like, "A fucking Dota card game." <laughs> and then the next panel has him being handed the presidency of the company. Like, <laughs> I don't... Like, and the other two are being thrown out the window. Yeah, the other Brilliant. two are being thrown out the window. That guy, he thinks outside the box. <laughs> like we need that that kind of thinking here at this company. Uh, yeah, that's. I mean, I get that there's no bad idea when, when you're brainstorming. Well, there's no bad idea, but that was a fucking bad idea. I mean, technically, like, though, you bad. are correct. It is thinking outside the box compared to the other two are just sequels. Yeah, like what do you have to be on to think of a Dota card game? Yeah. Like, that is the most outside it's, the box. It's pretty thing outside you can the box. Think of. Like I don't like like it's like 
like they sat down and me and all right, guys, we're going to make a taco with like a chicken breast as the fucking shell. <laughs> and while we're at it, let's give people a Dota card game. Like that'll they'll line. The kids will leave school early to buy that shit. Like they'll be lining up down the block. I, I do imagine a bunch of Val producers just in a break room, just like. <sighs> Uh, hey, Jeff, you know how everyone loves, like, Portal and Half-Life and all of our other IPs? Well, what instead of giving them any of that, we fuck them over and we give them a fucking Dota card game? It'll be fucking hilarious. And it'll be like, that's funny, we'll never do that. And somehow it became policy. Yeah, are we, like, exactly, like, are we sure this wasn't a joke that just went too far? No, like, no. Somebody, like, didn't just want to be like, okay, that's enough. Like, they've this had joke two, has gone on far enough. They've had two weeks to retcon this and go, like, no, 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 we were just kidding and scrap this. No, they're stuck with, like, nope, that's, this is what ha- they're is They're committed now. <laughs> they're in for the long haul. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do one, one, one more for, time. for you one for one more, time. one more for is Bert. That Twitter handle for at play artifact. Is that? <laughs> oh, oh shit! Man. Why is that? Oh, for an advertising. Shut up, YouTube. <laughs> okay, I've done a lot of panels, and not all of them have gone great. But I've never gotten that reaction. Oh, that's... <laughs> that's something I'm going to keep to my heart, is that that has never happened to me. I mean, I think I'd rather have no reaction, honestly. <laughs> no, was, silence would even be deadly, yeah. but they didn't even keep silent. They were they were audibly upset. <laughs> like, oh, god damn. Uh, anyway, uh, normally at this point in the episode we would do a little bit of trailer talk. But there's only one trailer for this week, and uh, we don't have the video for it. So I guess we'll just talk about it. But that is... But, Sorry, I, I might have uh, jumped the gun on that. I'm trying to guess because I have no idea what trailers came out this week. Oh, you're trying to, are you trying to guess? You haven't seen uh, our man, Frank? Your man, Frank Castle? Oh, did they release a Punisher trailer? Oh, okay. Well, maybe we'll, uh, maybe I'll see it so that Fur can at least see it. I'd love you guys, to see this. You guys like, can, I, yeah, you guys can hear you it. You can hear it. Uh, but, but first, like all My of our- My favorite tra- part of this trailer is when they're gonna reveal the Punisher logo and people start laughing. Like, that's gonna, I can't <laughs> wait for that part. No, they're gonna reveal, like, no, instead of a Punisher logo. Punisher card game. A Punisher uh, card game. <laughs> <laughs> and just like. Frank, what are you gonna do to the day? Dude, I'm going to the Magic pre-release. <laughs> Dude. You don't know how much mana it takes. Anyway, uh, we gotta, of course, load up our trailers. And who's here to load us up our trailers? Tom from Toonami. Tom, load up the trailers. Yo, Tom from Toonami here. You're listening to the UGO podcast. And I hope you all are ready because trailer talk starts now. Dude, did that, like, did you, like, you, holy shit, that is tight. That's yeah. Steve Blum, my friend. That's amazing. That is Steve Blum at a, at Kitsudakon this year, who I, uh, who I stalked and got to record a little something for us. I'm, I, sometimes stalking pays off, guys. Hey. That is the lesson to learn from this. Stalk your idols. And we Wait, by which I mean, I, a, over I went up, panel. asked him nicely, and that. paid for a recording. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he was very nice of us to do it, do it for that. So now we have Tom from Tsunami introducing our trailer segments every every week, and uh, my life's complete. I feel like I'm it's it's over for me. It's all downhill from here. Might yeah. as well just all, shut it down. Honestly, all downhill at this point. from here. Anyway, yeah, the trailer up for this week is Punisher. Let's see if we can get that up here real quick. Oh man, is that all the things that I've done? <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I don't know if you're right here. I don't know if you're right here. They never hurt me. But the past is more than memories. It's the devil you sold your soul to. He's coming. said it, I was a little disappointed. Anyway, uh, for those Why has he got to be so sad? For those of you who couldn't Nick. hear because of, because of that fucking rock band, anyway, I, I tried I tried putting it as high as everything could go, and, I, and they defeated me. To, I, we're getting our asses kicked by this rock band. Anyway, uh, it's very dark, very sad. There's a lot of people getting shot. He's 
got a hammer. He's trying to rebuild his life. This is going to yeah. be good. Um, I like that. You know what? In his uh, in his uh, post Daredevil uh, phase, that he's taken up sculpting. That's uh, <laughs> that's interesting. I feel like that'll work for him. You know, some sledgehammer sculpting. I mean, a little unorthodox, but look how good he is at it. I my favorite part of the Punisher trailer is um, when when uh, his friend. When he said to him, he goes, what are you doing, Frank? And he looked right at the camera and he said, I'm punishing. Like, that was my favorite part of the trailer. Yeah, I'm it was really they, good. I'm glad they ended with that. For, <laughs> yeah, for those who couldn't hear, it was just, he said something about owing the devil his due and some, it ca- sounds like it came out of like one of the Punisher's war journals or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's basically just setting a move. It's just a teaser. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to a certain extent, uh, because I realized that we haven't really had a great Punisher movie, unless you count Taken, uh, Man on Fire, and uh, what was another re- John Wick. Like, they're, they're all great Punisher movies that just don't happen to star the Punisher. But you know what was a fucking great Punisher uh, property? What's that? The video game where you could feed somebody to a goddamn yes. shark at an aquarium. <laughs> and that one, yes. had, that one had the fucking bandana he had, too. That one went old school. Um, I don't know. Did I, I didn't see any white boots. Do you see any white boots? No, no white boots. No white go-go boots. Oh, okay, this show's gonna be bullshit then. That's my cutoff. Like, come on. If we're not gonna go go-go boots, then what are we doing? Um, I think John Barrow did a great job as the as uh, the Punisher in Daredevil season two. Uh, I like his even in this trailer when he's walking in slow motion, he still has that head sideways walk where his head moves so <laughs> fucking much. Like his he's like a human bobblehead when he walks. Uh, but it's scary as shit. Like, I, w- I wouldn't say it to his face. I mean, That's have you sure. ever had a bobblehead slowly walk towards you? <laughs> um, as an actor, he's just kind of a cocky asshole anyway. Like, not in, like, a bad way, but, like, like everything he's ever done, he's kind of just had that, like, yeah, well, that, he, that thing about him, you know? That shame from the Walking Dead thing, right? Yeah. I, that's always what I think about him as, where he's got this, like, cool walk of just, like, he, like yeah, I'm, I'm fucking uh, John Bernthal. That's right. Um, so, uh, in a John Bernthal fashion, let me ask you something. Uh, that's my Hold favorite. On. Well, I, I dig that. <laughs> like, uh, I'm into that. Like, no, uh, that's my favorite quote of his. Like, that's like his catchphrase from The Walking Dead. It's like, hey man, let me ask you something. Uh, and I, I can't wait for the Punisher to ask some people something <laughs> with actual axes. I feel like that will happen, and he'll use his catchphrase, and that will be the point of the show where I'm like, yes, ten out of ten. And then, and then, and then, like uh, somebody he hasn't punished yet is going to be like, oh my god, I loved you in The Walking Dead. <laughs> and then Andrew Lincoln's going to come out and be like, Shane, Shane. Uh, but you know, uh, I don't know I, I'm kind of excited. I'm not sure. Like, what, is it going to be 13 episodes? We don't know. I prefer shorter run. Uh, ever since Stranger Things came out, I'm kind of like, eight is my lane. I like an eight-episode arc. Uh, I don't know, Fur, what do you think? Uh, my problem with, with, <laughs> with like, I... Especially with how dark this show is going to look. Yeah. This isn't going to be a fun show to watch. Like, this is not going to be a, I'm going to hammer this out in a single night like I did with Stranger Things. Like, at Stranger Things, that day came out, I started watching it at, like, seven o'clock at night thinking, oh yeah, I can hammer out a couple episodes of this. I managed to finish the, that series in a single night. This, I hope it's less because um, I got very, very fatigued with with the Marvel shows. I have not watched Iron Fist yet because I do not like Iron Fist, but I could not brain spike Jessica Jones. I could not spike Daredevil. It's such a, an emotionally draining Thing to yeah. watch that, and, and I have a feeling it's going to be that way with, with The Punisher. Uh, so I would prefer eight episodes, because yeah, I could probably hammer out uh, eight episodes in a single day if I wanted, but I am not going to want to sit through 13 minutes of him just like, and here's how I'm going to murder you using like a plastic cup and some jelly beans. Like, this is... <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I agree with that. Um... I lo- my favorite version of the Punisher is the Garth Ennis Punisher, uh, Punisher Max specifically. But anytime he writes him, he does a really good job. Where Punisher is basically just kind of a sociopath. Um, this Punisher is a little different. He has more emotion behind him. He has more of a char- actual character. Um, which I feel actually works better in a TV show. You kind of need that because you can't just 
see his narration on the side of the panel. Like, so you need a little more from uh, from him performance wise. Uh, so I like where it's going. My main thing is like, who's he gonna fight? Like, Punisher doesn't really have like aside from Jigsaw, uh, he doesn't really have a lot of main villains. Well, is this a prequel? I'm not really sure. They're flashing back and forth. They're messing with the timeline. Okay, then my best guess would be shooting something. Pink, uh, Kingpin. Kingpin. Ooh, that I I would watch him versus Vincent D'Onofrio. That would be does, fucking cool. Does. What does Netflix Marvel own the rights to? Like, what what do they like? They obviously don't have X Men villains. They they uh, they have uh, uh, they have everyone in uh, they have everyone in like uh, the Avengers kind of rogues gallery. Okay. Uh, that but that's all too high level people for anyone so, street level. Well, so does like Spider Man is with back in within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, kind of. Kind of. So we have access to Spider-Man villains. Swarm. Yeah. Swarm the Nazi Swarm. made of bees. There we go. Yeah, all right. Nazi made of bees. Yeah, I'll, I'll I, want that. Thir- I will watch 13 episodes of The Punisher fighting a Nazi no, made of bees. My vote was Stiltman, but I like yours. I, I like yours better. <laughs> I like yours better. Probably because no one knows who Stiltman is. I see a lot of, like, confused looks right now. No one knows. No, okay. Don't read enough Daredevil. <laughs> He's a guy who his power is is that his legs kind of can extend and he can walk kind of on stilts. Is that it? Like that's his superpower. Yeah. He is the lamest fucking guy. It Daredevil just kicks his ass every while. Like dude, like there's a point where Daredevil loses his radar sense, which is the thing that allows him to see, and he still k- st- kicks Stiltman's ass. <laughs> it's just like, ugh. <laughs> sad life. Stiltman could get the Infinity Gauntlet, and then Daredevil would just show up and go like, dude. What are you doing? Just just give it to me. We know how this goes. All right. All right, Goblin, you're going to fly in and you're going to bomb the place. Uh, Rhino, you're going to blow open the doors. Uh, Stilts, man, when we get in the bank, we're going to need you to grab the money bags on the tallest shelf. I... <laughs> Come on, guys. I'm part of the play. I'm an important part of the team. Who put the mixing bowl on top of the china cabinet? Stiltman, this Stilt is all you, buddy. This is a job for Stiltman. <laughs> you think this feel bad for him to just purposely do that kind of thing just to make his day a little better? <laughs> like, they're <laughs> villains, but they still feel bad for him? <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh. Yeah, that's, uh... So that was fun. But let's get into the main meat of the episode, shall we? Let's talk yeah, about fun con hour, stories. Hour 15 minutes later. Yeah. <laughs> but let's get into it. Uh, Fur, I would love to hear a con story from you. You've been to a lot of cons. You've had a lot of experiences. Would you like to share one with the group? Yeah, I would. All right. Yeah, I, I like I like the little th- thought process. Like he was not sure. I had like, to think. Do I? I, I had to think because I know um, people. I know I know people have gotten the idea for me. It's like, oh, Fur is <laughs> Fur is the one that will will do his comedy show, and then they'll like kick him out of the bar at a certain point, like. And I wanted to do one that didn't involve drinking, and I think... Um, it took a while to think of it, It took huh? a while to think of that one. Uh, I think my favorite one might be Anime Milwaukee 2000, and... It was either 11 or 12. And uh, Wendy Powell was a guest that year. And uh, I was rooming with, uh, at the time... A guest head for a convention, uh, for the convention, no brand con in Eau Claire, mm. uh, when it was in Eau Claire, and he was very good friends with Wendy Powell. So, uh, Wendy Powell came and ha- hung out in our room, um, which quickly evolved into <laughs> me and a couple of other people escorting her husband to the Potawatomi Casino at one in the morning, uh, from Anime Milwaukee. And as we're there, it's like, we, I, I have, Wendy Powell's phone number, like the voice of the voice of Envy. I think, it, I think it, Envy's with Laura Bailey. It, uh, Wendy Powell played somebody in, in Full Metal Alchemist, uh, but was she Winry? No, no, uh, that was click. That was uh, to the IMDb's. <laughs> yeah, to IMDb's. But but we're there, and like I have been given this mission from like this idol and and voice acting and anime, which is do not lose my husband. <laughs> Uh, like, do not let him wander off on his own. Like, do not, under any circumstance. So it was me and two other people that decided, yeah, we'll go to the casino with him. Um, 
Literally the minute we got there, we all blinked and he was gone. <laughs> oh, damn it. You had one, one job. job. One job. And so naturally. I like that we did that together. That was good. Naturally, the minute we get there, at five minutes in, we, we can't find her husband anywhere. It's like, oh, my God, where is he? This is a huge fucking place. What are we going to do? I get a call from Wendy right away going, like, how's, how's my husband doing? And it's like. <laughs> Like you didn't do like a whole hangover thing where like, oh, he's good. He's great. He's this right. is great. Oh, you want to talk to him? What? Uh, oh no. Um, let me, let me go. He can't talk right now. He's playing a slot machine with his mouth. He can't, he can't <laughs> oh, you're, talk. You, you were right. I, I shouldn't have said she did play Envy. She did. I, I figured it was something like that. Uh, and, and the next hour was spent combing the hotel and casino <laughs> area. Did for you Wendy check the roof? Howell's husband. No, Fielding calls from her, I'll have you know. Oh, be like, oh, uh, yeah, no, he's here. He's just busy right now. He's in the bathroom. Uh, Until we finally, it's two o'clock, and we get we have like it's last shuttle home. He was at the entrance the whole time playing a slot machine. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time, right where you left him. Right where we left him, uh, and literally like, and we were supposed to kind of limit what he was spending. Oh, like we were kind of in charge of that. Uh, so we get there and we're like, oh, how much have you spent? He's like, I'm like $200 in the hole right now. No. Uh, and I'm like, oh, no, this is going to be a rough ride back and a rough conversation with this voice actress. Um, <clears throat> and <laughs> I uh, literally the very last pull of the lever he dropped a two hundred dollar payout. <laughs> what <and> broke even? <laughs> yes. So the whole way back, we're sitting in the shuttle, just like, "Yeah, I got him here. He's doing great. No, this is good." Uh, <laughs> Didn't lose that any money. The most terrified I've ever been in my life at a convention. I was in that moment. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I should have name dropped her, but I did anyway, just because why not? I. No, was, we're, we're friends on Facebook. She knows me. If anything, it was a more disparaging story for you because I, if you would, if she, he, if he hadn't had that payout, that would have been a great ride. We're like, you know, st- for, for, I didn't ask for like ju- the green M and M's to be taken out of the bowl. I didn't like. All I asked was you to keep an eye on this one fucking guy. Pass the hat around on <laughs> the shuttle, guy. Two hundred dollars. Now you don't understand. Envy from Full Elegy is just gonna be pissed. I like, just run around the convention like what? Oh, that's great. Uh, so, yeah. Can you, like, weekend at Bernie's it with, like, cash? Like, is that a pot? Like, <laughs> like yeah, no, I got your, I got $200 right here. No, you can't look at it. No, no this, it's right here, though. What? Trust a, me. A, a bunch of ones with a 20 wrapped around it. How, how dare you? How <laughs> dare you? In fact, I'm not even going to give you this to you now because I'm so offended. <laughs> this is a $20 bill with zeros written at the <laughs> end of the list. <laughs> Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Is the Confederate money not good enough for you? <laughs> was that the line? Was that where it was? Uh, we towed it. We towed I think, it. I, I think. All right. I'm just, just checking. Like, uh, all right. So before. What about you, what about you Travis? Me? Yeah. What Travis, about you? Like, yeah, Travis. What was what about you? Or should we have one of our lovely guests come on and do? Oh, I can always mention that I had something fun happen today. What yeah, home? yeah. Whereas uh, we were walking around saying hi to the various uh, people we've met <laughs> at various other times. <laughs> Sorry, I know what exactly you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and one person who I I do remember meeting her once, but she recognized me. Like, I've done a pinup of you, haven't you? I'm like, yes. My my best friend has commissioned a pinup of me a through your art style. A sexy male pinup. That's how she recognized. That him. is that is how I was recognized today by a, by an art vendor. I'm like. That All was, right, so that was one hundred percent my fault. Yes, uh, and you were still going to pay for that, La- Leticia. It, it cost me a lot of money. It was like sixty bucks, man. It was good too. It was you really good. Pay for that, yeah, Leticia Figueroa. If you guys know her, she's uh, nerd by design down like uh, down the other hallway here in the vendor hall. She does uh, male pinups of like some superhero characters and stuff. So I got one of me and all my co-hosts that we all look at while we do the podcast. Is that available as a body pillow cover? I oh, I'm gonna look I, into that. Yeah, can you make that happen? I oh, think, yeah, I'm, that's I'm, gonna be such an awkward, awkward Instagram pick. I'm oh. helping you cross a, thre- across a threshold of merchandising you didn't think possible, Nick. No, I, I'm. You know what? Uh, I'm gonna steal that and not give you any credit for it. I don't want credit but, for but that. I, but I you remember will... that. You remember that scene in Doctor Who season four where they're at the or no season three 
where like the world has ended, the master has taken over, and they're standing at the apocalypse device. And Martha's like, who am I talking to? And this one's like, I'm from Germany. And the other one's like, oh, I'm from this place. And the other person's like, I would rather not have on record uh, in the history books what I'm about to do. Like, when you launch the, the unapologetic geek out pinup body pillow covers, I do not want my, my name on the record as being somebody involved in that process. It would just be a rumor, a wisp of history. And I'll like, just, I'm just gonna second that with, I don't consent to any of this. This would be the, keep tur- the checks coming my way though. This, Send me some checks. Like, this would be the turning point in the MTV story of us, like where it really turned. And then, and then it got weird and started ordering body pillows of all of us and sleeping with them. And he wouldn't sell them. They it's, were all personal. <laughs> it's only weird if your hands are covering your junk. Then it gets weird. Like, if you're just like, this is what you get, like, deal with it. But if you're, like, doing that cutesy, like, thing, like, then that's that makes it strange. That's the oh. line. <laughs> that makes it, like, sexy, playful. And, like, I don't, I'm, like, okay with just, like, plain sexy. But, like, the minute you add playfulness into it is where I think the line crosses. Like, mm-hmm. where the line is. Yeah. Uh, I'm making all sorts of noise on the mic by... <laughs> by thumbtacking a plastic cup. Yeah, I want to edit that later. That's going to be great. I'm going to be really happy. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. I'll, I'll join in. Just let me crack my fingers oh, a few no. times. Anyway, I think it's... I'm going to roll some dice and eat some chips. Hold we've, on. Let's... We've waited long enough to bring up some of our illustrious guests. Like, would anyone like to share a con experience that they've had? Oh, man, we got one definitely right off the yes. bat. Come on up. Chewbacca over here? Yeah? Do you want to explain yeah, the story why Han's not with you? Like, what happened to him? Oh. Is, that movie, oh. is that movie going as badly as I heard? Don't want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> She's in character. I like it. That's commitment right there. Okay. Um, you can just grab it. Like just. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like this? Take it right off. Okay. Well, this happened to me and my friends at this year's Anime Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, we always come prepared with our food. That's the one thing we always make sure we have. So you want to pay those iconic absor- uh, absorbent prices, right? Yeah, it's, it's just, um, well, we get to the hotel, we get to our room, we make, everything was in there, until the hours later, where my friend right there and I get hungry, mm-hmm. we look for our bread, no bread was found, it just disappeared. I like how you were pointing at him the entire time, are yeah. you accusing yeah. him of he, taking the bread? No, he That's was, a lot of him pointing. and I... No, him and I were the ones who got hungry and was looking for it. Okay, I just want to point out you're yeah. still pointing at him. Like, yeah, okay, this is going to be the whole thing I'm doing. Yeah, I, mean, I know I, I know who you're talking about. Like, yeah, I got yeah. it. It's, it's that guy. Okay. But, yeah, no matter where we looked, the bread just disappeared completely from our hotel room. So, therefore, we basically had no food for the whole weekend because Wait, so of that. so all of your food was bread-based? Yeah. Hmm? We only bring sandwich stuff. Have you ever heard of, like, a breadless sandwich? No. No, you don't we, do that millennial bullshit. Wraps, no. Wraps are a thing. Wraps are, a good, uh, wraps are good. I wraps are good. I would have. I would have made some lemonade. Is all I'm saying. Okay. I would have made some you're, lemonade. You're the Mexican. You're supposed to bring tortillas. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you said it. Because that way we could. She's my best friend. It. I can say stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because I have an imaginary black friend, which is why I'm about to make a horrible racist joke. Uh, but yeah. But no, I'm glad that she's right there. You have proof. Like, yeah. Uh, but it turned out good in the end because we found an Aladdin cosplayer and we just accused him of taking our bread. <laughs> so he was your ama- So your first uh, thing was to blame a minority. Wow, <laughs> yeah. really learning yeah. a lot about you today. Uh, but anyway, thank you so yeah. much for sharing that. That's really I, great. I, oh, I, also, if you come up here, you're gonna get heckled. Like that's almost like what? we should have we should have warned you about that from the beginning. But any everyone else. Like yeah, we it's that's part of the I game. Just, I just thought of a really another really bad anime Milwaukee story, and I feel really bad because I love that con. But like, there's some re- like I was there like so one year the the whooping that like everybody knows the hotel whooping that occurs there every year, right? Like it's on like Friday night and at like eleven o'clock sharp, just everybody goes outside and starts screaming. One year it was accompanied like right above where we were. But somebody above our, our uh, hotel room, we'll edit that part out later, yeah. uh, decided, like, along with the whooping, they were going to throw down towels covered in, in human bodily fluids. Oh. 
And it was a rain of towels and like, and then like apparently someone across the way saw that and thought, yeah, that's a good idea and started doing it themselves. Ugh. And it was like the worst like five minutes I've ever seen at a hotel. And I like, and which is terrible because like I love anime Milwaukee and I love that hotel and I, I didn't go this year. It was the first year since 2010 I hadn't gone. But like, my God, like that moment was just like, it was, I, it was watching just a disaster unfold at a con hotel like I had never seen before in my life. I haven't seen that bad, bad of a disaster involving bodily fluid in a hotel room since that time in Russia with that Trump guy. Oh, hey! Keep Allegedly! Current, Allegedly! Current news. Like, do not we've, want... we've got, like, what, apparently ten minutes to do, to do five minutes to do five more minutes con horror do... stories. So if you got a hot... Uh, okay, so if you got a hot story. one, hot one coming up, who wants to yeah, share? Yeah, come on up, yes? man. Yeah, alright, come on up. Is it a hot one, like, seven inches from the midday sun? <laughs> No, but I might burn you guys anyway. So let me set the scene for you. This is um, this was a con last year in 2016 here in Wisconsin, and I was up in the Dells, and I was going to this panel, and it was a podcast panel, and it has this couple of geeks doing a live show, and I decided I was going to come up and do a story about the time I set a muffin on fire in my microwave. You guys remember that? Oh my God! You, Unless you're that was in my the old podcast. Guy. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> Muffin in the microwave guy. I'm so glad to have you back. I'm sorry I don't remember your, remember your name. But. Yeah, that's fine. He had a badge on that told us what his name was. Yeah, it's AJ. But I, yeah, I know I I know it's AJ on there, but all I can see is muffin in a microwave. <laughs> yeah, uh, I sad to say the 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 microwave is now gone. I moved and it got left behind in another house and it is gone. I thought the muffin finally got it. Hold okay. on. <laughs> was was it like a sad reunion? Like when you were leaving, was it just like was the microwave like come back, AJ? Come back. <laughs> and you're like, we can't we can't be together, microwave. I know I put my muffin in you at one point, but it's just it's over between us. No, no, the toaster was basically like the, the iron giant where he was like, No, you can't come with me. No following. Super be good. <laughs> but ultimately the point of the story was is after uh, I hung out with you guys, I pointed out that, you know, sometimes I have social anxiety and have a hard time talking with people because of it. Uh, mm-hmm. later this year at the con I actually managed to go and play uh, board games with one of our guests, special guests at the what? game with the guests panel. Uh, Linkara, who does the top of the fourth wall, and I actually played it with him without freaking out. He's a great guy. Too. Yeah, yeah he is really great, amazing. We've inter- interviewed Lewis before. He was a great guy. Yeah. yeah, and it's like you know, ever you know, I've been working a lot on this ever since I have you know came up and told my story with you guys, and I thought I'd give you a follow up. Oh, well, thank thanks, you. thanks for letting us know. I, hey, we give that a round of applause. Yeah. Thanks, thanks so much, AJ. And one more thing, I have since also almost ruined the new microwave I got too oh, with a bowl of ramen. AJ. <laughs> and ends it on one job. Ends it on a joke too. What? Okay, that, I'm going to give AJ. We're going to give him a, a round of applause and thank you so much for attending and sharing your stories with us. And it was crappy shrimp ramen though, so anybody, I didn't lose anything. <laughs> anybody have two? We have two minutes left. Three anybody got one? Anybody, get out up here quick. Go, 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 go. I got adopted by two drunk people at Anime Milwaukee 2015. Man, Anime Milwaukee's off the fucking <laughs> Man, What is in the water at Anime Milwaukee? Oh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, we got one quick. Is we got it, one, one more. One yeah. more. There's one. Uh, I'm trying to think of the Anime Con I went to. Uh, uh, anime Milwaukee. Let's, yeah, we'll let's just call it Anime Milwaukee. I think it was Anime Apocalypse where... Oh, okay. uh, where a group of guys on top floor end up setting a couch on fire and threw out the window. Yeah, hell yeah. So what happened was it end up hitting the I'm trying I was on the bomb floor. It comes hits the ground and smashes right into the window or <laughs> into my hotel room. They did it twice. They moved me like next door to the same like moved me to the I'm sure the same, same yeah. balcony structure though. Okay. Right. Damn. That's Does it again? That's twice. Twice. <laughs> yeah. Like how would I? How would you? I know. How they how didn't get thrown be out? Be like, oh man, like weird thing. Weirder things haven't happened, but at least like we're never gonna see it. A couch get on set on fire. Like, oh fuck! Holy <laughs> <laughs> fucker! That's the setup to a web comic. That shouldn't I be know. real life. Uh, That's the worst sketch on uh, Saturday Night Live this weekend, actually. <laughs> Bobby Moynihan's in it. He's, he plays the couch. He, plays the he commits, uh, though. you got to give him that. He's, inver- he's versatile. <laughs> uh, right. We got 1030, and there are people sneaking yep. in here. So, so 
Thank you so much for coming, guys. This was an absolute blast. Thank you, our special guest, uh, special guest <laughs> for Strews. That was Strews. 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 I'm gonna get it right eventually, but <laughs> this was absolutely great. And uh, have a wonderful. Yeah, thanks, for, thanks for having me on, guys. Of Appreciate course. It. Have a wonderful day and a great rest of your con, guys. This was absolutely fun. Yeah, thank you.